Climate Watch. Rising temperatures are causing alarming changes in the Arctic. That's according to the 2019 Arctic Report Card, which was released Tuesday by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The report reveals rapidly melting ice sheets. Thawing permafrost and rising sea levels are all putting ecosystems and communities at risk. Danya Bacchus has more on what this all means for our planet. Scientists with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration say ice in the Arctic is melting at an alarming rate as a result of climate change. These changes are affecting people today. According to the agency's annual report card, average temperatures in the Arctic were the second highest recorded since 1900 when record keeping began. The bigger picture reveals significant warming trends and average sea surface temperatures across nearly all of the summer ice free regions of the Arctic. The unprecedented warming and low levels of sea ice is endangering marine species and commercial fisheries. There's less and less snow and there's less and less ice and that means trouble not only us hunting and fishing but the animals that we depend on. New research also finds Greenland's ice sheet is melting seven times faster than in the 1990s. The ice loss could contribute to widespread coastal flooding in the years to come. Danya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. CBS News climate change and weather contributor Jeff Baradelli joins me now on set. Jeff, this is really scary. So land surface temperatures in the Arctic correct me if I'm wrong, are the highest that they've ever been right now? Yeah, so this year they were tied for the second highest. Okay. Uh, the highest was back in 2015, 2016 during an El Nino. But certainly things are warming extraordinarily rapidly. For instance, in Alaska in the wintertime, since uh, 50 years ago, we've seen temperatures rise around 6 to 9 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter. Think about that. 6 to 9 degrees higher than it was 50 years ago in Alaska. And all across the Arctic, you can see just how much temperatures have risen, about 5 degrees over the past 100-plus years or so Fahrenheit. That's about double or triple the rate of the rest of the globe. And that's causing systemic and fundamental change. And are we talking about land surface temperatures and sea surface temperatures rising, both right. of those things? Exactly. They are, they are mm -hmm. all rising across the board. Mm -hmm. Again, we're we're seeing everything change. Literally everything is changing in the Arctic. You know, there's so many stats. I don't want to get lost in the weeds here. I just want to tell you my personal experience. You know, I was a meteorologist, a, a full-time meteorologist all my life. And what prompted me to quit my full-time job and move into climate change was I saw change that was so alarming to someone who's been doing this his whole life in the Arctic that I needed to tell people, this is a bellwether, this is a canary in the coal mine, this is gonna have ripple effects across the whole globe. There's no fence around the Arctic. Things are changing so rapidly that the next step is for it to come further south. And we're already starting to see it affect weather patterns all over the globe. Well, we are glad that you did that. We, for one, are glad, oh, Jeff, you. that you <laughs> stepped away from your My old job. My bank account and... <laughs> isn't glad, but, but I'm glad you're glad. We are glad. <laughs> but how, what kind of changes are happening to the ecosystem in the Arctic as a result of this? So everything is changing. You know, if water temperatures this summer, for instance, were about 10 to 13 degrees above normal in certain parts. Think about 10 to 13 degrees above normal. So fish are changing their migrating patterns. Uh, Arctic ice is breaking up to the point where indigenous cultures there aren't able to hunt the way they used to. Uh, the ground is breaking underneath their villages and houses, and we're seeing sinkholes form. Um, it, it is change that is transformational to the point where these indigenous cultures will not be able to pass along their culture to their children. Right. And again, this has ripple effects all over the world because when you have that much warming in the Arctic, you change storm tracks and jet streams and you amplify natural patterns to the point where, you know, you make heat waves worse. You could sometimes stall storm systems where they just sit there for days and cause more flooding. I, for one, in my opinion, and again, I've been doing this a long time, think that the bomb cyclone that happened in the Midwest uh, last spring and last uh, winter was likely enhanced by Arctic amplification, by this crazy warming that's going on in the Arctic because we get these standing wave patterns. It can make droughts worse because if you're stuck in a drought, you're stuck in a drought for a longer period of time. If you're stuck in a heat wave, you're stuck in a heat wave for a longer period of time. I think a lot of scientists would agree with you on that. Now, the world's second largest body of ice, the Greenland ice sheet, mm -hmm. is melting faster than, it, than scientists can keep up with, right? Tell that's us right. what's happening there. So since the 1990s, we've seen uh, the rate increased by seven times, the melting rate in Greenland. 
And in addition, um, we have projections uh, about all kinds of parameters in climate into the future. And, and one of those is for Greenland. And we have a range at how fast uh, Greenland is supposed to be melting. Well, it's melting at the very high end of the projected range, which could very well mean that we see even more sea level rise. So estimates are that in the future, uh, by 2100, we could see a couple to a few feet of sea level rise. High end estimates are up near six -ish feet or more, depending upon how stable Antarctica and Greenland are. Uh, well, if Greenland's melting on the high end of that range, we could end up at the high end of that range. It's possible. It's very uncertain mm -hmm. as to how far uh, clim uh, climate change is going to cause sea levels to rise, but a couple to a few feet will inundate hundreds of millions of people all over the world. And that works its way south, of course, the rising sea levels. Absolutely. You know, yeah. the water immediately reacts, so right. the ocean uh, level goes up right. almost immediately. Yeah. All right. So I just want to switch topics a bit to talk about something a little bit more immediate, this winter storm that is coming out of the Midwest. What can you tell us about that? So, you know, this is not going to be a big snowmaker. So overnight tonight, around midnight or just after that, the rain will begin to turn to snow along I-95. So from Washington to Philly to New York to Boston, it's not going to be a big snowmaker. It'll be a lot less, I think, in D.C. than it'll be further north. And during the morning commute, it could be actually coming down very heavy, but only for a few hours. The, the snow window is only going to be four to six or seven hours or so. That means no more than generally one to four inches, and probably most of the big cities on the much lower end of that because it'll be warm. It was in the 50s today, so the ground is not right. really going to allow it to accumulate. So, you know, slushy one to two inches, but it's going to happen during the morning commute, so that could cause problems. The bigger story is how cold it's going to get afterwards. So, you know, today we were in the mid to upper 50s to near 60 it in New York City. It felt balmy in right. New York, It stays in the 30s tomorrow, and then near freezing on Thursday, and it'll stay in the 20s in places mm. like Boston, and temperatures are dropping 30 to 40 degrees in some areas from today to tomorrow across uh, places like the Northeast and Great Lakes. So it's a lot. And th that storm is not going to head to the Northeast? Well, it, it so will. that storm is going to be moving through our area tomorrow, but it'll be done in New York City and Boston by the late morning hours, okay. and then after that it dries out. So right. it's kind of a quick shot. It's a little bit of snow, but it'll um, leave us it's with not the cold. a... Yeah, it'll just, it's just a dramatic change from today to tomorrow. That's the big story. All right. Well, I, yeah. I did enjoy the temperatures in the 50s today. I guess I did sayonara too. to that. Exactly. Well, Jeff Fairdale, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.